Hey, everybody. I'm Ben from Nova Scotia, Canada, also known as Falcon in the Woods, and you're listening to the 4x4 Canada Podcast. Awesome. Then I'm your host, Wes, and really looking forward to talking to you tonight, Ben. We've been uh, trying to get more and more East Coasters on the podcast lately, so it's really looking forward to talking about Nova Scotia and overlanding and the Jeep life over in Nova Scotia. Uh, we are without Trisha. She might hop in a little bit later on, but there's been a bit of an incident out her way. I, I doubt we'll see her tonight, but I know she was looking forward to talking with you. Let's going to do a couple housekeeping real quick. The episode last week, we had Joel Tremblay from Northern Ontario. He's running the Tacoma and a uh, little cargo and close trailing. He's got it all set up for camping and, and that. So we had a really good conversation about that. Next week, we have Dominique. She is She wanders earth on uh, Instagram. And I met her at the BC Overland Rally a couple weeks ago, and she explores all over Western Canada and Western USA in her van. And she's living the van life. She's been doing it for a number of years now, and she's on the road full time. And I'm looking forward to that one, just talk, sitting down and talking to her and just exploring a bit more about that van life. It's not really off-road related, but it's still an overlanding thing. As our listeners know, we have a wide range. We have everything from the overlanding guys to the to the four by four the monster trucks we had a monster truck episode a couple weeks ago and so we try and break it up a bit but dominique she's a really interesting person i think you guys are really going to enjoy our conversation with her but today we are talking with ben from falcon in the woods on instagram and on youtube as well and you're based out of uh, nova scotia right that's correct central nova scotia What's the deal? I, I got to ask this first off. What's the deal behind your channel name? It's got to have a, a meaning behind it. I'm so glad that, that actually that was one of the questions you're going to ask me because once in a while people will wonder, like it's a strange name with Falcon mm-hmm. in the Woods. So I love the outdoors. I've always been a camper, a hiker. I was very active in the scouts movement when I was younger, mostly with the actual um, scouts division. So after Cubs and, and before Adventures. And with the Boy Scouts, I was the patrol leader. And our patrol, our platoon, was the Falcon Patrol. And the scout service that I belonged to, in particular, our group, which was the second Carlton Place Boy Scouts and Falcon Patrol, were an elite group. We won just about every competition that was out there. We had a really good patrol group. And it's just something that stuck with me. I've always liked the name, the, the, the Falcon. I love Falcons and I... I'm always out when I'm out hiking and looking for them. And when I was trying to think of a name, because I had all kinds of different things, Big Ben, Sasquatch, whatever. And I wanted something that meant something to me. And so I came up with Falcon in the woods, because that's where I camp, in the woods. And when I first posted it, it was actually cool that my scout leader, who actually is from Nova Scotia, he's retired now and lives in Digby, picked up on it right away. And that, <laughs> that was pretty cool. It, it Yeah, it hit me pretty hard thinking this guy remembers he was a huge influence in my life and one of the reasons why i do love the outdoors so yeah and i just stuck with it so that's where the name came from i think it's a perfect name for you when you explain it like that now cubs and scouts that's something that so many of us grew up in and you you grew up in ontario from my yeah. understanding so just on a small town in the ottawa valley yeah yeah but that's something that all across this nation, all, all across North America, or even the world, even Cubs and Scouts is something that got us into the outdoors even more. <laughs> and we learned so much as kids that we still remember today. And it's not just about the badges. Absolutely. It's about learning how to deal with people and how to deal with situations, et cetera. Absolutely. It was the Scouts was a pivotal in both my love for the outdoors, but also for my career. My, my career started in, in law enforcement. I, that's getting the, the Chief Scout Award was one of the main things I wanted to get. And it, it's still on my resume now. Even a, as an elite 40-year-old, it's still on my resume. It's yeah. something I'm very proud of. But yeah, the Scouts, is, it was a huge part of my life when I was younger. And it, it still is now. I, I did try doing the leadership part, but with everything that's going on, it was difficult. So I did have to back out. But it's still something I think about all the time. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I was in Cubs and I think I did a little bit of Scouts as well too. And yeah, it was just such a great time, especially going into all these other events like the Jamborees and that. I know we traveled yeah. to a few different Jamborees and meeting up with kids from all over Western Canada. It was just a real, like you say, 
pivotal moments in our lives. And it's so neat to see other people that are still bringing that on and volunteering with Cubs and Scouts over the years too. So obviously you've been into the outdoors since you're a kid. And what about four-wheeling? What was your first four by four? So it's funny. When I first got my driver's license, my dad had a Bronco 2, which is the smaller version of the original yep. Bronco. And it was a 4x4 a, a four four vehicle. Um, it had My dad had installed oversized tires on it, which was cool. Didn't really do any 4x4ing, four but living in the Ottawa Valley, I got to play in the snow a little bit with the vehicle. But my first ever Jeep sort of vehicle was actually with a, a job I had in Toronto. I was security patrol, and that's what we drove. We drove TJs. So that was my first experience with the Jeep. But I'd never got into the off-roading, going in the trails and doing some crazy stuff that we do now yeah. until two, almost three years ago when I got the, what I have now, the Jeep Gladiator. And we can obviously talk about that if you want, because the reason I was actually wasn't even planning on getting a Jeep. I was actually looking at a, a, a full size or a, a Toyota. I, I knew I wanted to get into overlanding because as much as I love the outdoors, the hiking part and carrying the backpacks is just getting a little harder now. Um, the older we get. So I, <laughs> yeah. The knees are starting to go and the stuff. I still wanted to get out there and, and not like camp at campsites. I wanted to get out in, into the wild woods. And I started watching videos on this thing called overlanding. And I thought, oh, this is something I got to get into. And my actually my first, I, if you want to call it my overland vehicle, was an old vehicle I had with the company, which was a Tavo 4x4. And I had a, SUV tent that I would hook yep. up to it, but still a little off-roading with that, but still that's a big SUV to try and take into the woods and just looking for different vehicles. And I happened to pull into a dealership one day and saw this, the Jeep Gladiator and, and the guy happened to have the key, the, the sales guy happened to have the key in his pocket because the guy was just looking at it. And I go, let me sit in this thing. Let me see. And I basically said, if I fit, because I'm a big guy, I'm 6'2", 6'3". If I fit, I think I'm going to buy it because I just love the look of it. Yeah. And I sat in it and I was like immediately just fell in love with the vehicle, the way it was laid out, the way it looked. And the guys, I have somebody looking at it. I go, yeah, but did he put a deposit? And he said, no. I said, I'm putting a deposit. <laughs> right then and there, I put a deposit. And then two days later, I was taking the thing home. That, that's how I got the Jeep. But then from there, you just start adding equipment to it. And if you want, I can go into yeah. detail. Yeah. So it's a, it's a 2020 Jeep Gladiator. I got, it was an off lease. So it was only a year old, had very low mileage stock when I bought it fully stock. But the, the Rubicon has the, the Fox 2.0 lift. Like it's got a little bit, I actually took it out with a local club here, four by four club. And these guys were worried that I wasn't going to get out of the woods. And I took it through stock and got through with this trail. These guys went on with these souped up Jeep JKs and stuff. And they were amazed that I didn't get stuck. So I was hooked, but. I wanted to be able to do this kind of stuff without doing too much damage to the vehicle. So I ended up within the year putting on 35 inch tires. I changed the bumper out in front with a winch and then started adding the overlanding gear. And so most of my overlanding gear, when it comes to hardware, is all go Rhino. I'm not endorsed by them. I wish I was. I've believe me, I've tried <laughs> contacting them. They're not returning my emails, but I everything I get is pretty much go Rhino. I just love the, their look of their stuff. For some reason, I relate to a rhinoceros when I see the, their little logo. Yeah. And with that, I have, I put the deck system, the drawer system in there for storage. I have have the iCamper mini tent with the full annex and then just tons of gear and just been, every time I get a little bit of extra money, it usually goes towards gear, but it's still stock in suspension and no lift. And that's probably the next thing I'd like to do is get a little bit more of a lift and more heavy duty suspension with all the gear on the back. It is heavy. It did sag for a little while. I did have to install the, the airlift uh, mm -hmm. airbags in the coils. That seemed to help. My first set actually pop. The good thing with airlift is they have a lifetime warranty. So they were pretty awesome. They replaced them without any questions asked. And so that's what I'm driving as well. And then I also... Just recently got an off-road camper, a mm -hmm. teardrop. It's uh, made by Braxton Creek. It's called a um, Bushwhacker 12 Rad. So there's a Bushwhacker 12 ROK, which stands for rear outside kitchen because the kitchen's at the back. Yep. But the radical version is the off-road version. It's got a heavy-duty suspension, a little higher clearance, 
it's got a, a power tongue and just some other oh heavy duty roof rack, just a little extras. I did take it out once on a pretty rough trail and other than a few things inside being shook around, it handled it really well. And on a regular pitch, I don't have a, like a lock and roll or anything yet. Yeah. So I did see some information about that on your Instagram. So I was going to ask about that trailer. It's pretty happy with it so far. It's, so far, pretty good. Yeah. So I purchased that one. First of all, another buy on the whim. I happened to be somewhere. I think my wife had to go an appointment and there was an RV place across the street. I walked in <laughs> and ended up walking out with papers for this trailer. It's for entry level cost. It was good because I know like these actual uh, overlanding trailers or the off-road trailers are can be pretty expensive, yeah. even just base model. This one came with quite a, a lot of extra features for the less. But if you ever do any research on Braxton Creek, or if you watch videos, they're mass produced. There are a few things that you have to keep an eye on. And I know some people will buy those kinds of trailers and redo the whole galley to the way they want. Yeah, I'm not in a position to do that yet because it's still under warranty. <laughs> But who knows, maybe down the road, I may tear it all out and just build it my own way. That's the fun part of it. It's got a great skeleton. So is it a uh, teardrop mm -hmm. style? It is teardrop. It's more, maybe more square drop. Yeah. It's round at the front and then it's around us at the back, but that's where the kitchen is on, on the 12, the 12 Brad. Anyways, there are other models. There's, I think the 10 SK, which is a side kitchen. So it's got a side pull out. They've got all kinds of new models now. I think they've got one. I can't remember what it's called. You can actually walk into it in the back. It actually looks like a toy hauler and then you can walk right in. Do you, how do you find, because you've been camping with the rooftop tent, you've also been camping with the trailer. Obviously there's differences in what you're doing with it in regards to the drivability and, and stuff like that. But obviously the trailer is a bit more comfortable. What do you prefer? So I, yeah. So the good thing with the trailer is it usually stays packed. Yeah. It sits in the driveway, it's packed, and I could hook it up and go. And all I got to do is stop at the grocery store, grab some food. Yep. Where with the rooftop, I if the vehicle is at home, it's mostly my daily driver anyways, besides the work vehicle. So I don't keep all the stuff in the back. Now, comfortable, the trailer is definitely much more comfortable. It is hotel on wheels. <laughs> it's got air conditioning. It's got oh, really? propane heat, yeah. elect electric heat, and uh, a nice fan. Like, but I think it's a... I think I have a six inch mattress I put in there plus a, another pad. So it's pretty comfy. Yeah. It's definitely glamping, glamping bed on wheels. But the reason why I went with that style, because people always say, oh, you don't have a bathroom. No, you don't have a bathroom usually when you go camping either, <laughs> is I just find that if you have a full trailer where you actually walk in and stand up in, you're going to spend the time in your trailer. Yeah. Some people do. You just, it just becomes a habit where you're going to go in and watch TV or something where at least with this, it's a bed on wheels. Yeah. So you're only really going in the trailer to sleep. And even cooking with and it being at the back. Cooking's outside. Yeah. yeah. And I had, took my bat wing awning off of the, the, the truck off the Jeep and put it on the trailer. And then I just have two regular awnings of a four foot in the back and a, and a six by eight on the side for the Jeep. Cause now I have, cause I have walls for my bat wing awning, which is the, the 270. And so that's like a whole other room outside yeah. if I, if I needed to, if it was bad weather, if it was raining. Yeah. So do you, going back to your rooftop tent, how is that iCamper mini? Cause you're a big guy, you're tall and that, how did, was that comfort wise in the. So the only thing I've done with the iCamper mini is I've changed out the mattress to an air pad, yeah. four inch air pad. For me, it's fine. It would be difficult. I think if I had somebody in there with me, yeah. it'd be tight, but yeah, I find it very comfortable. There's something so cool about sleeping on the roof of a vehicle and waking up in the morning and opening up the door or the window and, and like especially some of the places that I camp, you're waking up to amazing sunrises or or sunsets depending on the way you're facing. Yep. Um, and I've winter camped in it. Uh, yeah, I've I've done it all. And the cool thing about a rooftop in the Jeep, I can pretty much go anywhere I want. Exactly. Yeah. Like if, if the vehicle's fitting between two trees, I'm going. <laughs> And that's how we found some pretty cool spots. And there's a lot of logging roads here. And yeah, I don't mind the pinstripes on the vehicle. I don't want to get huge dent or gouges. I've got a couple now, but, but yeah, what they call pinstriping, which is yep. scratches from branches. I don't, that doesn't bother me because I usually end up finding some pretty cool spots to go. 
So when you're going out camping, you're in Nova Scotia, central Nova Scotia, are you mostly on the ocean or you had an inland kind of idea to lakes and stuff like that? I, I don't know much about the East Coast. And I'm still learning, which is the cool thing, is I got so much more to explore. And you go on different groups or different apps and you try to look at what other people have. have. I haven't, unless you're going to a campsite, I haven't had a chance myself to camp right by the ocean, but except for in Cape Breton, which I'll get to in a minute. The cool thing about Nova Scotia is you can drive from end to end in eight hours. Right. And most of it is facing ocean. Yeah depending on what coast you're driving on uh, until you start heading towards New Brunswick, then you're driving away from the ocean, but then you get into New Brunswick and you're on the ocean again. It's cool. And that's the other cool thing is where I am, I'm two hours away from New Brunswick, Moncton. I'm just a few hours from PEI, whether you drive like four hours, you drive or take a ferry and you drive up to Cape Breton and Sydney and you get on a ferry there and six hours across the ocean, you're in Newfoundland. So it's pretty cool. I've never overlanded in, in Newfoundland, but I've been there. Yep. And when I went, I was like, I've got to, I got to bring the Jeep here because it's absolutely cool in Newfoundland. In Cape Breton, I've never went on my own. I went with a group not that long ago. We we're up in some pretty cool spots and park on the edge of a cliff and the ocean is there. It's, if, if you can Google spots, you can say overlanding in Nova Scotia. And most people will show you Meat Cove and places like that. It's, it's, it's amazing spots. A lot of the, because overlanding is becoming a thing, overlanding and boondocking is, is really growing. So now a lot of these spots that people used to go to are now getting signs posted, no camping oh, at night. Yeah. Uh, people are, have complained about it. So, But there are spots that I've been told about that I haven't explored yet, going towards the Armouth and Digby and the South Shore and other places in the north in Cape Breton that are right next to the ocean. And if you watch videos, you will see these places. People are pulling right up onto the beaches. And setting up camp overnight. Just pretty pretty cool. But having said that too, you get into some of the inland stuff and you guys got some great country inland away from the ocean as well. We do. And and a lot of it is like crown land or conservation areas, but a lot of logging roads. Yep. And you drive down the logging roads and then you see an ATV path and you pull, as long as the vehicle fits, you go. And I've found some places where I'm thinking, where is this going? It's just getting tighter (laughs) and tighter. And all of a sudden it comes up to an opening and there's a lake. Yeah. And you're all by yourself there. It's just pull up next to the lake, set up camp. It's been amazing. I've, I've, I get shocked every time I, I decide to explore. The thing is you try not to do it by yourself sometimes if you're going to some rough areas. Yeah. Yep. You know, um, but I've been pretty confident so far. <laughs> I haven't been stuck yet. So the, yeah, that's something about going and just driving and finding places. I, I tend to do a lot of work on my maps and stuff like that and get an idea, but a lot of times there's roads that aren't on the map and you see it and you're driving by and it's like, where does this go? And then you yeah, get some absolutely place. Google earth, any maps or Island. Oh, I overlander. Like I've, I found, I remember one time going on Google earth just for fun. Yep. I found this little spot that I thought I, I could, it looked like there was a trail and there was a bit of a beach and it was like in a spot where I thought there's no way anyone's ever been there. And I get it. I found it. I, I got there. And someone had set up camp. I'm like, somebody probably did the same thing I did. They had all these little tables and stuff made out of trees and branches. And I'm like, oh, someone's been here. This is pretty cool. I have to admit, I've been to, um, I've been to the East Coast a couple of times and absolutely loved every time I've gone out there. Absolutely loved it. I'm on the other coast. I'm out in BC. So it's just as beautiful as BC is. And and the overlanding world seems to be pretty big out there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I do follow a lot of the, the YouTubers that are out that yeah. way. And I was planning a, a cross con a cross, a cross country trip to be, to out West. I'm not sure if it will happen. It was something I was planning for probably end of summer, but now something has come up here where I may be doing something different, but we're on uh, fire. Want, so. Yeah. We were last year at this time. Yeah, too, exactly. So. <laughs> yeah. It, that's one thing about living up in BC is we definitely get in Alberta, we definitely get our fair share of fires, unfortunately. And you guys had a really bad year last year. You guys don't normally see it that we bad. Did. So fires and flooding, it was yeah. rough. Yeah, no doubt. So hopping back to your Jeep, there's something I noticed on one of your Instagram posts that caught my eye. And one of the recent mods is that hydraulic jack. Yeah. What's that all about? Check so that's actually Go Rhino's hydraulic 
Jack. They call it the Elgato. And I was just trying to look up what Elgato was. I can't remember something. <laughs> Elgato. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, yeah. Cat. I don't know why. they. It's Spanish for cat. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> I don't know. I Maybe it has something to do with it being so elegant and the way it works. Most people will have the high lifts. Mm-hmm. I nearly knocked my head off once with the high lift handle. Yep. <laughs> and I was like, this looks dangerous. Yep. Not being so familiar in how to use it. And I saw this jack and, it, and it's not cheap, unfortunately, but I thought, man, that look, that would look cool. Uh, like, cause they have, a, they have a custom, not custom, but they have a, an actual jack mount that for the gladiator. It's on the driver's side and it looks like a bazooka on the side of the, <laughs> on the side of the cheap. I get asked all the time. They're like, Oh, is that a bazooka? <laughs> no, it's a, but it's a hydraulic jack, just like your bottle mm-hmm. jacks. It works on the up and down motion. And then it's got a, just a, an easy release. So when you push the button, it slowly releases your vehicle or whatever you're jacking. The other cool thing is it's got some, some attachments to different size hooks. And it's also got another hook. It's like a strap with two hooks. So if you had big wheels and you had a hard time lifting, you can jack up your vehicle, put blocks, whatever underneath it, and then use these straps with the hooks to strap onto your wheel. And then when you undo the bolts, you can actually lift your tire right off in the, right. you know, if, you, if you're not strong enough to move it or if you're in a bad yeah. spot. So, that's yeah. a cool little addition. I'd seen it is, and, it, and it's funny because since I've got it now, I've seen. I think ARB has <laughs> one. They have a something yep. similar, and then there's also a no name one, and I don't know the name of it. I just saw a video the other day, and apparently it's like half the price. So it's like anything else. There's always going to be knockoffs out there. Yeah, and um, some, but a lot of times knockoffs are not as good. Sometimes they are, but a lot of times they're not. Right. So just got to be careful. Yeah, exactly. I guess when it comes to jacking up a, a vehicle like the Gladiator, and I just wanted to make sure I. Do it safely. Yeah. Well, as, as you mentioned, high lifts can be very dangerous. And that's something that I just don't, I've never really used one. And one time I was messing around with it. I was, I didn't even have to change a tire. I just wanted to see how yeah. this thing worked. And I'm, like I said, the, it, the handle flew back and nearly knocked my head off. So I was like, oh, this thing's <laughs> fun. So have you named your vehicle? I haven't. I've messed around with names. I, think, I don't know if you can see. Yep. The, I own a security company. The name is Jalkar. And I one time said her name is Jalkar Source. Just for fun, but no, I haven't yet, which is funny because I know a lot of people yeah, do. A lot of people do. I don't and myself usually, but I know a lot of people do. So thought about something in that, in using the Falcon, like Peregrine, but I just haven't come up with anything yeah. yet. That, that if any of our so. listeners can think of something for Ben, shoot him a, shoot yeah. him a message for sure. So. Yeah, for sure. As I slowly add more gear to the Jeep and start putting more decals on, the, I'm thinking about the Rubicon decals coming yeah. off and then putting the name of the yeah cool there so yeah for sure so you've basically just gotten into this whole overlanding thing in the last you know couple of years right is yeah. there what recommendations would you have for somebody wanting to get into it they see all these vehicles around they see all these videos and that what would you i think if you're i think if you're new to it just do like i i did i i watched a ton of videos a lot of research what i was what kind of gear i was gonna think i was gonna want i actually started off with a soft top mm-hmm. rooftop tent great tent but what a pain in the butt to to close up after yep. the eye camper or probably any hard top it literally takes me like two minutes to open and close yep. that thing and, and it, everything just tucks in closes and you snap it shut you're not messing around with a soft top trying to get it open because my 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 soft top first time i tried to zipper it closed the zipper <laughs> so i ended up ratchet strapping <laughs> after that if i spent all that money on a brand new soft top when i should have just waited a little longer and got got the yep. hard top and then other thing is, and, and it's like anything, there's so many cheap alternatives out there. And yeah, they're great. You get them. But a lot of these cheap things, the first time you use them, they break. So if it's something you think you're going to be doing long term, then save up and, and get the good stuff. Yep. Um, Cause I've spent a ton of money on different storage containers and then you end up getting the expensive one. And then you're like, wow, this thing's so much better. And then you got all these empty boxes at home with that you bought i've got all kinds of storage containers and i ended up um spending some money on some more expensive stuff and that's the ones i use all yeah. the time now because they're weatherproof the waterproof and that man you could throw those things down a cliff and they don't break yeah. the research thing is fun in and, and then make sure you get like i said the equipment whether it's the vehicle i'd say make sure it's the vehicle you want uh, for me i wasn't even looking at a jeep gladiator even though i liked them I was looking more full size, but then you got to think about with a full size, certain spots you won't be able to get into because it's just too yep. tight. 
or vice versa, there's places my gladiator can't go because the, the obstacles are too big. And that's the other thing is like how, what kind of hardcore off-roading are you going to be doing and where, where are you going to be going? Because there are some guys out there that go some pretty crazy spots. Yeah. And then maybe the other thing is join local clubs. Mm -hmm. um, I know they're everywhere now. They're on Facebook. They're, there's overlanding groups. There's four by four groups. I belong to a, a four by four group, which a lot of people might have heard. It's Pirate off road yep. And I belong to a local chapter. They pretty much go out every other weekend um, off-roading. And then now that's actually moving into a camping because now I've got my trailer. Another member has built his own trailer. We've already planned some weekends where we can go. Uh, there are overlanding groups. I know probably out west there's a lot more bigger groups, but it's something... It's funny because here you see every third or fourth truck go by and they've got a rooftop tent. And I don't even know who they are. And trying to, that's the other thing is join yeah. groups, get out there, talk to people. I always find that overlanding in groups is so much way more fun because now you're, you're camping as, as a group. So you're looking for spots that you can all camp together. A lot of times you can go to some more challenging spots because you're not by yourself. So if you do get stuck, you've got help. Yeah. I'm going to throw another name out there too for people on the East Coast is the Hub City Overlanding Group on Facebook. Ryan yeah. and uh, Zach and the guys, a good but bunch of guys yeah. there. I don't know they're a little bit different. Yeah, actually, I just joined that group because so I was just invited oh, the other day. Perfect. So. Yeah, no, it's a good, yeah. it's another good East Coast group, base group. So for yeah. sure. So yeah, I've the group I went with to Cape Breton, we basically that weekend decided we're a new family. So we're always talking now and we can't wait to plan our next adventure. I'm actually going to New Hampshire. Um, a couple people that came to that weekend were from New Hampshire, cool. uh, Granite State Overland. And uh, they're doing a weekend at a, at a, at a campsite. Um, it's called Gunstock Mountain. It's, uh, I guess it's a ski hill in wintertime. They got zip lining, all kinds of stuff. So I'm joining them in a couple of weeks. They'll I'm actually going to take ferry from here, which I've never done, the ferry to Maine. And then from Maine, I'm going to New Hampshire. So it's pretty cool. And I'm going with just the Jeep, not the yeah. trailer. I'm fully overlanding this trip. So Nice. That, that's one yeah. thing I've noticed about the overlanding community is it, it's very welcoming from what I've noticed anyways, no matter what you're driving. But also, it's oh, everybody's, for the most part, pretty friendly they want to talk about wheeling they want to talk about camping and they're great sitting around the fire and like you say it's your chosen family Share information chairman is rusty from granite steep um he's he's making up some decals for me which is awesome because he has yep. a machine i didn't know that until we got <laughs> talking and uh and and his partner sylvia is overlanding in a crv yep. so it's it's amazing um yeah there's pretty much a rooftop tent for every type of vehicle now that's one thing that, so, yeah, I, I, we've interviewed a lot of rooftop tent companies here on the show. And that's one thing that the guys are saying is that it's just not, the rooftop tents aren't even just for the overlanding crowd anymore. They are gearing towards guys with mountain bikes or gals with mountain bikes and different things like that. Because there's so many of those people that love the outdoors just as much as we do. And they're out there doing these activities and they want to, after they've done the mountain biking or whatever, they want to stay out in the woods so it's, it's growing some from just the overlanding to everybody <laughs> i think those covid days had a lot to do with people just wanting to find alternatives to to get away and do stuff i started before that but covid did have a huge impact on that yeah, yeah. for sure this is a question we ask quite often we all we get a variety of answers but when you're out camping and you're cooking are you one of those guys that puts on a better meal out camping or are you sitting there with your hot dogs and a bag of chips or does it depend on what's happening? Gourmet. There you dogs. go. <laughs> no, I love to cook just to start with anyways at home. So I'm cooking really nice meals when I'm camping. I Both my trailer and my Overland setup has a flat mm -hmm. top. Uh, the trailer has a Royal King and the... the the Jeep has a camp chef or something. And the only, and I actually looked today because I wanted to put the Royal King on the Jeep, but it's the connection to the propane tank that doesn't line up. So I have to bring my other one. I also have a camp stove and stuff too. But what I like about the flat top is, except for boiling water, you're not bringing pots and pans with you. You're just bringing in utensils and you cook everything on the flat top. That's something I hadn't thought about, to be honest but, with you. 
So you're bringing less and I've almost finally you can do a lot more. I boiled water on the flat tops. It just takes a little longer with a yeah. pot or a kettle, but I have not a jet boil with a fire maple, which is just as good. And it boils water yeah. in two minutes. If I need to make a quick cup of coffee, so I usually boil it with that. But everything else I do is on the flat top. And now you see a lot of people with those, the, the Temple Scottles yeah. or the, the other ones are just the same. Yeah. So I got a bag of utensils, spatulas and whatever, and I just cook everything on the flat top. And I'm doing like fusion foods and stuff. Just because you're camping doesn't mean you can't eat well. And hot dogs I still do, but they're yes. gourmet hot dogs. Yeah. And I just found a new recipe that I saw on Instagram where they made this hot dog. They put all kinds of stuff on the bun and then they just filled the bun with cheese and turned the whole thing upside down on the flat top and grilled it like that. I'm like, I can't wait to try that. <laughs> I did that actually at the BC Overland Rally here a couple weeks ago and made quesadillas nice. out of with hamburger and put the uh, hamburger down first and then the case of the, the wrap down and then flipped it back over and put another you know, wrap on top and lots of cheese and it worked out great. So any tacos or Mexican food is usually a staple yeah. for me on, on camping and like Asian fusion. I'll do a stir fry and then add ramen noodles to it. And that's my yep. noodle. And that's, yeah, I, I've been getting more into the <laughs> cooking when I'm out camping this year. I've been really pushing myself to do things better than say craft dinner and a hot dogs kind of idea, but I've been actually really enjoying it because um, I do enjoy cooking at home. Yeah. It just, a lot of it's just a yeah. lot of prep work sometimes cooking on yep. the fire too like, i did a thing this year on my birthday weekend back in march and we put whole pineapples in on the coals so we didn't take the skin off and we let them blacken up in that and then cooked them for quite a while and then we took them out of the coals and cut off the skin and seared it on a flat pan and or like on a grill thing with a little bit of brown sugar on and Oh, that was just incredible because oh, yeah. the keeping the skin on actually caramelized. Oh, yeah. Caramelized was, the sugar, right? Yeah, so sure. the taste was just incredible. So there's so many things. I'm always looking for good ideas for campfire cooking or. It, it's funny because the way the algorithm work usually on social media, like I'm looking at recipes on my Instagram and then my next 15 things pop up is it's usually <laughs> recipe stuff and i usually end up saving them because they just look so exactly you, you look at my private account and it's uh, all my saved stuff it's uh, it's all camping food stuff right so yeah, always <laughs> do you i'm gonna give a shout out to Dwayne from just jeeping adventures i don't know if you follow him on on youtube or instagram he's got a white jeep as well when i started following him he got he's really into the cooking as well and it's something he's gotten back into a little bit more lately and uh, yeah, just yeah. jeeping adventures. And there's things like the cinnamon bun pancakes he makes. And there's, I went camping oh, with yeah. him a while ago Not and it, his buddy brought a smoker and I'm like, who the hell brings a smoker camping? Right. But we had brisket <laughs> and it was just, oh, the, oh, yeah. uh, the potatoes, mashed potatoes they made, they were just probably the best mashed potatoes I've ever tasted. So it's just, it's that's, cool. And that's the cool thing about overlanding. Like when you're backpacking, mm. you're trying to keep that backpack yeah. light. When you're overlanding, man, whatever you can fit in your vehicle and in the back or in your trailer. Yeah. Not, and that's what's cool is you can bring a lot of stuff. And I know to. I've learned to get better with my packing because when I first started, <laughs> I had so much stuff. Like it was crazy. And now it's what do you actually need? What am I actually yeah. going to need this weekend? So I'm pretty good now, but I still have these little boxes of, I guess you want to call it your possibles kit. Like I have a little toolbox it's just got everything you could think of if i run out of batteries or candles or something i just the box is full of everything and, and it's come yeah. handy a few times it's funny i went through a purge about two years ago on my camping like my kitchen camping stuff and basically at the end of the season i ended up putting like a little stickers that you buy at, at dollar store or whatever these little round stickers on it and every time i used something i'd pull that sticker off at the end of the year, I had a whole bunch of stuff, probably half my stuff that I had never used because the stickers were still on them. Right. So I was like, yeah. okay, I can get rid of these. If I didn't use them in a year, I don't need them kind of idea, right? So I have two or three of everything. And it's just something I think that's, I guess that's the scout <laughs> part to be prepared. Well, I'm, I'm always afraid of, but you still oh, forget yeah. something. I don't think there's been ever been a camp where I've gone. I know I had this. Yeah. Where did I put it? And then it ended up, it's sitting on you know, <laughs> stairs of the house. Every single it. time it's, it's until fun. I got the rooftop tent. Now everything stays in my rooftop tent. So it's, it's good that way. I like all my bedding in that, but it'd be like things like the pillow. You forget yeah. the pillow and then you got to use a, a sweater to use as a pillow. And <laughs> that's, 
It's the only sort of, that's why I went to the air mattress with the, the I can't for many, just you can't, it yeah. doesn't fit bedding. I know with the larger one, I think yeah. you can leave your bedding. Yeah. So that is one thing. If I do upgrade the eye camper anywhere down the road, it's something I'm going to make sure that I can close with, with bedding. Yeah, that's a big thing with me. Uh, space space, space yeah. is crucial. Like I've got an access cab to, co- to coma and it's like, there's not a lot of room behind the seats. And I've already got my fridge there already. So yeah. there's not a lot of room to put in a sleeping bag and pillows and all that other stuff. And I don't want that in the bed of the truck because it's going to get dusty and stuff like that. So the rooftop tent I've got worked out really well for that. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're sitting around the fire, what are you drinking? I, when it comes to drinking alcohol, I'm not, I don't mm-hmm. really don't drink much. It's what I do. Every once in a while, we'll go and grab a six pack, of yep. good light beer and have that, especially if it's a weekend, but it's usually a cup of yep. tea or a coffee. Most of the time I can drink a cup of coffee and go straight to bed. So <laughs> Uh, tea's a little different. I got to watch what yeah. kind of tea I'm drinking because I've been, I've drank tea before. I've been up all night wondering if that's <laughs> happened. But then I realized it's a cup of tea. But coffee doesn't seem would, to affect me. Yeah. Or a good hot chocolate. Would you believe that I've had coffee maybe six times in my life? Oh, wow. Well, no, I, <laughs> coffee's bad. I'm trying to, I've actually reduced a lot, but it's still, it's, I love the smell. It fresh coffee is such a wonderful smell, but. For some reason, I just never got into my parents' drink of black. So that's what brought it. It's like, yeah. oh my God, this is gross kind of idea, right? And then a uh, few times I did try it, my stomach didn't really like it. So I'm like, you know what? I'll just stick with my tea and hot chocolate. It's the next thing I'm cutting out. I've cut out yep. pop Good completely. For you. Or I guess the Americans yep. call it soda. <laughs> that's been pretty recent. And now if it's something that somebody gives me, and if it's any kind of pop or soda, I can't drink it. It's weird. It's, I immediately taste the yeah. syrup and the sugar, which is good. So I don't drink that anymore. Coffee, I've reduced the amount of cups of coffee I drink, but I still drink a lot of coffee. And I think it might come with the work I do. We're yeah. up late all the time. We're up early. That, that, that happens. One of my weaknesses, and I really got to work hard on this, is is bags of chips. I am bad that way. And that's probably why I'm the shape I am. <laughs> but it's just especially if I'm driving by myself, which is, you know, quite often, even if I'm out with other people, I'm still driving by myself and I got to have something to nibble on or whatever. Yeah. And so I got to stop, I got to start eating better on with the road trips rather than just grabbing a bag of chips. Yeah. yeah. But there's all, we all have something we can improve on <laughs> human nature. What made you decide to start, I guess, with the Instagram channel as well as a YouTube channel? So, even with my personal life, my work life, my social media is pretty active. I've always been that way. I've got a lot of hobbies. Another hobby I had was I actually kept a lot of different tropical fish and fish tanks. I had a, a little hobby business doing that as well. So I have an Instagram for that. But I've always been the type of person that just likes mm-hmm. to share what I do. And then when I came up with the name, I started the Instagram. I watched a few videos on how do you grow your Instagram and, and followed some of those things. And then the Instagram just started taking off and I'm like, cool. And then you see like other people documenting their stuff on YouTube. YouTube for me is a little harder. It's a time thing. I'd like to get a lot better. The cool thing is, is like you see, you do see some people out there that do get some kind of, they get noticed and companies start noticing them. And that actually happened to me, which was the coolest thing ever. And so you become an ambassador for some companies and which is neat. And, the one company that reached out to me is MC mm-hmm. Ranch Overland. Yep. I don't know if you like, but they're, they're the creators of the original fire reflector. And I always saw other people use them. I'm like, man, I'd love to get one of those. And then out of the blue, someone who knows me introduced me and it went from there. And and that's cool. So yeah, I guess just sharing what I do. And with it, I'm, I'm at a point now in, in my personal business life that I'm still a ways from retiring, but I am looking at stepping back a little bit. And I'd like to get out and do a lot more of of the camping, the overlanding and, and start planning some bigger trips and just documenting it and getting better at YouTube. YouTube is for yeah. me, the difficult one. I think, I guess we're in that age category where we, I, I feel like we're in the middle of non-tech life and then tech life where we're learning and we're, we're able to keep up with it. But then there's my kids, they're yeah. just born in it. When I first started the company, my middle boy developed our logo for our company on his iPod. Like he just created it in five minutes and goes, here, dad, is this what you want? And I'm like, yes, exactly what I want, which is the center part of our big logo. He had yeah. created that one too. 
but the original logo was the center part, the center shield. He literally did that on his iPod in five minutes. I think he was 14, 13, 14 years old. It's incredible. I agree that you were we're in that middle area and, uh, I started high school in a typewriter yeah. and finished in a computer. Yeah. So we're in that transitional phase. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. YouTube, it takes a lot of time as well, right? That's a big thing too. Yeah. And I do have mm-hmm. a few videos out. I hate the sound of my voice. I do see a lot of silent YouTube channels <laughs> and I might go that route and maybe just talk a little bit. But keep, the thing is, I love yep. telling stories and I love talking about things like when it comes to my business, I love talking about my business. We have quite a, an interesting story and in how we started. And, and I can go on and sometimes when I'm doing my sales pitch or whatever it is to a new client, they just look at me and I'm like, okay, I'm talking too much now, aren't I? Like, so it's the same with the overlanding and the camping. I love to tell people what I do. And sometimes even clients will see on my social media on whatever they say, oh, I see you doing this camping thing. And then I get talking about it. And I talk to you off. So a lot um, of us are that way as well. So that's. I just have to become a better yeah. presenter and, and the, the YouTube, I, I find, I have a lot of friends that are YouTubers and I find it to be almost a bit overwhelming in regards to how much work or how much, the more you do it, the better you get. It's the same thing with podcasting or whatever it is, but you go back to our first episode and it, I can pretty much guarantee that it is totally different than what we're putting out now. So, and oh, same you know, about the voice. I had no idea I sounded like this. <laughs> yeah. So I have a list. I didn't know until I started listening to myself. <laughs> so I hate hearing that because when I talk now, I don't hear it and feel it. But when I listen to it, I know I have a pretty bad list. That's just me. I, I never noticed it until I'm not gonna be able to change mention it. Now, now I'm sitting there listening. Right? Now you know. But yeah, YouTube, I definitely want to get better because I yeah. have the equipment for it. I've got all kinds of mounts for the Jeep to put different cameras on. I've got the drone and all that. And you get, and then sometimes you're like, oh, I'm going on this trip, like Cape Breton. I was like, man, I brought, brought my all my gear with me. Not once <laughs> did I take the camera out because I was just having so much fun doing the off roading. And then I, I got to remember to stop and set up a camera. Because the guys are really good. They're like, if you want to stop and set up a camera, just let us know and we'll pull over. Yeah. And I'm like, I just never did it. That's another thing, yeah. too, is some people don't like going out with the YouTubers because of all the time it takes and stuff like that. Myself, I enjoy it, but yeah, it's all you know, each to their own, right? So I, I've been out with, with one YouTuber and I kept telling him, he would never tell me when he was filming. So I'd be like, hey, Jared, and he's like, I got to start over. And I'm like, oh, sorry, because he does more right. mostly silent videos. So I was like, Man, you got to tell me you're going to be filming. So. Uh, I hear you on that. So the last question we ask all our guests is, what Canadian would you like to listen to on the 404 Canada podcast? Because you're out west. I don't know if you've had the epic Not road yet. trip to Van, Van Strap. I love their story. I watched yeah. every one of their videos. Uh, man, would I love to live the life they're living. Exactly. Six, seven years now, living full-time. And watching the, the kids it's, grow, right? And kids grow. Kids have grown up, they're married, yeah. they're having kids. And I feel like I'm part <laughs> of their family. I've never met them. Um, that's where I saw the OFR for the, the fire reflector. Yep. Like, I'd love to get one of those. So, and then there's Sean's yep. story. Yeah, we did interview out. him last um, fall. And I've been watching him yep. for, for years. I've seen him from when he first started to now having this full size Dodge Ram. Like, it's, I love watching the yep. how things progress in, in there. And obviously, it becomes a part time thing to becoming now this full time career, which is way i'd like to go i think that'd yep. be a pretty cool way to to retire is make it a full-time career out, out of overlanding and, and documenting and sharing with people um locally i don't know if you've heard um a friend of mine lone wolf 902 jeremy he's a camper bushcrafter he does overlanding he's got a few channels but lone wolf 902 is his main one i've gone out with him once and i'm trying to we're trying to plan another outing together right now but same watched when he would go camping part-time on the weekends to now having a huge subscriber pool and he does this full-time and uh, I just love watching, love watching the videos. I love watching people turn this into, I don't want to say turn it into a job, yep. but it's a job and, and it's a cool job. Right? Yeah, definitely. So, I will have to check yeah. him out. I haven't heard of him yet. And that's one of the reasons we ask this question. Trish and I know a lot of people, but when we ask this question at the end of every interview, it's, we're learning about more and more people that are out there that we never had a clue. And I didn't tell him, I didn't tell him I was going to name drop. So I don't know if he'll be receptive you to it or not. He's got a big following. 
Uh, he does everything. He's got a van now that he's built himself. He goes yep. overland camping with, but he also has a Jeep and a, and a truck that he's built from ground up and does some overlanding. And he knows, like, when the question when it comes to where do you overland in Nova Scotia, he's, he knows this area really well, and he's, he's gone to some pretty cool spots. He even hammock camped in the last hurricane <laughs> last year. He's done some pretty cool stuff, and he's got some cool stories. That's what it's all about, yeah. right? But, you know, that's a great suggestion. Like I say, that's something that we've met so many people by these suggestions at the end of the interview, right? So that is great. Once again, we are talking with Ben from Falcon in the Woods, and you can check him out on Instagram and YouTube. Is there anything that we missed that you wanted to mention, Ben? I think I feel like, and maybe I'm not checking the right spot, but I feel like it's such a huge community, especially here out east. Like I said, I see every other Jeep Gladiator or Tacoma with a rooftop tent. Don't be afraid to reach out to the groups on Facebook and let, you know, let's grow the community and start doing some pretty cool stuff. There's a lot to explore here. Um, I don't think they're camping at the campsites. Yeah. Maybe they are, but um, I feel like that is one thing. And I think it was one of the questions that you said you might ask is what do you not like about the overland community? And I find here is a lot of people just do stick to themselves and maybe that's what they want. But I always said that the more people, the more fun. And, and then, you know, with my camping group, I belong to a, 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 a teardrop trailer organization. I'm actually the chapter director for them and with another person. Uh, we're trying to get it going, but then you start doing gatherings and then this becomes maybe a, an annual thing turns into a monthly thing. And, and I think that would be cool. It's, I find that it's probably not just overlanding. Um, a lot of things that used to be so active mm -hmm. are not active anymore. People don't join forums anymore and talk and do things. And I feel like a lot of people just stay behind their computers and they're afraid to go out. And it'd just be nice to get back out and doing things with people and growing these communities. And I think the Overland community is, is an awesome one. And I'd just like to see it more active, especially out here in the East Coast. There's a few Facebook groups and I'm active in both and I'll post, hey, does anyone, and I'll get it. I don't get one answer from anyone and I'm going by myself. Yeah, there's, and and there's pros and cons to going by yourself as well. I, I've gone lost by myself, but that's also when I was going through shit and I needed the time alignment. Yeah. But oh, yeah, definitely. there's, like you mentioned, it's really neat to go out with a group of people and just sitting around the campfire after and exploring and stuff like that. So, yeah, I agree a hundred percent. It would be really neat to see an event out your area, like the Overland North event or the BC Overland Rally. Something like that, I think, would be really neat. And that's the thing, like all the overland yep. expos and that are mostly in the States. And I've looked at a few of them and there's 24 hours for me to drive there. Yeah. So I'm not gonna, I think I think we may have something a little closer happening soon. It won't be in Canada, but it would be like yep. in the main area, which is still six hours away from me, which is not bad. But that's, that's it'd be nice. It'd be cool to see Canadian... Yeah. Overland Expos. Yeah, like I mentioned, they've got good ones in Ontario, so and Alberta's got a good one, and BC's got a really good one as well. So I've heard rumors of something happening over there, but hopefully next summer it actually you know happens. So I think that's a really yeah. A, you definitely feel the community when you go to some of these events like that. I hope they do have something. Uh, absolutely, and and I've been in touch with different companies. Like I said, I'm open to become ambassadors for other companies, but I've offered like my vehicle and say, Hey, do you want to throw your rooftop tent on it? And I'll bring it to yep. that show and you know, showcase your tent on the Jeep Gladiator and stuff. So I'm hoping that happens down the road. And I've learned the art of sales in the last yep. few years being in my own business. So I think I'm, I'd be pretty good at going to these shows and representing a company and, yep. you know, and at least I'm there. I'm one of the guys that are out there camping yeah. and using this stuff i can tell you what's good and what's not especially for us big guys that's the other thing that's, I, and that's why i mentioned how you fit in the eye camper mini and stuff like that because and there's a lot yeah. of things like that even going to clothing and stuff like that that are not easy for bigger guys so yeah definitely yeah awesome ben once again we're talking with ben from falcon in the woods you can check him out on instagram and youtube and I really want to thank you for taking the time to talk to me tonight. I know it's really late over there. You're all oh, in the whole other side of the world. So we got a, what, four hour, yeah. four hour difference, I think, on yeah. time. Thanks again, Ben. Really appreciate you uh, coming out tonight. Great. Thank you.